Well, hello everybody, and welcome to day three of wind. Yeah, we're getting them up there at 30 miles an hour right now. And we're going to head outside so I can show you what uh, kind of production I'm getting out of this on my uh, PMA wind turbine. Now remember, my PMA is a KT5 1,685 watt. And uh, I'll tell you what, this, these winds are just, you know, a little wind every now and then is just fine. But three days straight, three nights straight, just listening to the wind howl and not being able to get anything done. And then the first thing I'm going to have to do when all of this stops is go around and pick things up like uh, old Clem there. He's... Uh, He's hunkering down underneath the uh, swing right now. And uh, this time he didn't even lose just his leg. He lost uh, an arm or a hand too. So this bucket I heard slamming around out here. So I have to come out and get this. And there's the weather over there. Okay, up here, nothing. Clear, clear blue skies. But I can hear my turbine humming. So let me... Uh, let me get this over here where it'd be a little bit safer for blowing away. And, oh man. Oh yeah, the, uh, the dump load is turned on. You see the yellow light, that means that the dump load is operating. And I was asked about this, uh, this little PWM um, controller and why there's nothing hooked into the solar side of it, the input side. Just the battery and then the um, accessory. Well, that's because this is not a charge controller as, as a, you would know, to, know a charge controller. You don't have any input onto this. You have only the, it's only reading the battery voltage and when it reaches a certain setting, then it turns on the accessory and it sends that power down to the two posts of the solenoid which activates the solenoid which is basically a switch and then one of these posts is connected to the positive pole of a battery and the other po post of that runs up to my um, heating element here and that's putting off some nice warm heat right, what a nice hand warmer that is so that, it doesn't get super, super red hot or anything like that. So, I mean, this, I can put my hand on this black wood right above it. And it just, uh, it feels like I just put a glove on. That's about as hot as it gets. But you can look at my um, Harbor Freight panels up there. You can see them kicking between voltages. This one's at, vo at float. So there's zero amps and watts on it, it they just kicks on, on and off but I'm still bringing in 112.4 volts on those big panels and this one's on float also so there's there's no more power actually needed here so here's my um, readings for what's coming in on the PMA so this is the incoming wattage right here in this corner and you can see as the wind dies, it drops down. And then when we get a wind gust, you'll see it all of a sudden jump up. There's a gust. And we went over 500 watts coming in there just for a second. But yeah, I'm, I'm bringing in 20 amps and uh, the watts peak. This is about hours. Amps peak 84, watts peak 1269, 1270 is a... Is a, a total uh, watts peak and that's an 1850 I think it is uh, watt input uh, PMA so this is the rectifier I use and it's got some cooling fins on it because these things will, will get very hot so what I did was I attached that to another um, heat sink that I had uh, pulled out of an electronic bunch of electronics. 
So these screws that run through here are connecting it to another heat sink, which lets more air flow. And then I've got this um, CPU motor on here, which is cool, blowing cool air from down low down here, up past that and right out through the top. And it's keeping everything cool to the touch. I mean, there's, there's no heat there at all. So, for those of you who are um, just wondering, three wires coming in means it's AC, alternating current. And that's uh, why they call it a PMA, the Permanent Magnet Alternator. Now, PMG is a permanent um, generator, uh, permanent magnet generator. And that would only have two wires coming in. One would be black and one would be red which is positive negative. So you wouldn't need a rectifier because um, it's sending in DC. This, what all a rectifier does is it takes AC current and changes it to DC. So you have a, a red and a black coming out. And those run through my meter here. So it tells me uh, what kind of powers I'm getting on my inputs. And then <clears throat> that runs through my DC breaker here and down to the batteries. So the one, the positive runs down to the uh, first battery in the in that bank, and the negative here runs to the last battery in the bank here, or opposites, first battery, last battery, however you want to look at it. Okay, so that's what we're getting out here right now, and that was a good gust right there. It brought me way up over 500 watts. But I don't need any electricity. I've got all kinds of stuff running inside the cabin right now trying to use up some of the energy because uh, it's not really good for your batteries to just be taking all of this power in when you're not using any, you don't need it. So that's why these things shut off and go to float. So I would rather see these saying MPPT and still have 13 six or 13 seven in the batteries but that means that it, the it's there the batteries are still taking a charge and i'm using the uh, power that i need so uh, there's the batteries are being worked batteries like to be exercised and uh none of these are warm they actually have um temperature sensors that are stuck between the battery banks and uh well, this one right here yeah, there's, there's one right there, and that keeps a track of the temperature of the battery so that the uh, charge controllers know what to do. <clears throat> so, it's nice that I could get out here and show you this without getting blown away. The winds are gusting up and down, up and down, and uh, this one had these two because they're working pretty hard, but there's no heat coming out of them right now. And this fan runs off of the um, accessories off of this rover. And that keeps that fan running to keep moving air around these uh, <clears throat> charge controllers, keep them cool. Now this one in the summertime, when it really starts getting hot out, I connect this one up to this charge controller and don't let this fool you it says MPPT solar on there this is not MPPT this is PWM if you open it up you'll see that it is a PWM but that's one of the things that uh, China gets away with China will um, lie about all of their stuff now you remember my old power jack um, inverter this is a names of course the, the, the Ames 4000, but the old power jack said on it uh, that it was a 8,000 watt, 32,000 watt surge. And then in fine print right on the front, I showed you in one of those videos where it says it wouldn't even handle a 1,200 watt um, surge from a pump, from a water pump. And that's why, that's how I found out it was no good was I put my, finally put a water pump in my system uh, to give me water pressure throughout all of my water and my hoses and that stuff. And uh, it kicked, the pump kicked on and the inverter popped out. Well, I'll tell you what, 
I swear by these Ames inverters. These things are strong. They're industrial strength. I mean, they really, really work well. I love this thing. And uh, this is the low frequency series. This is a split phase. Um, 240 volt split phase. So I got 122.40, 50 to 60 hertz, 4,000 watt max. Now, on the 4,000 watt max, this thing is rated for like 1,200 watt surge. So I have no problem there with that. But uh, the 4,000 watt max actually means that you're getting 2,000 watts of uh, 120 on, on each 120 leg. So um, I got to make sure that I'm, I never run over 2,000 watts on constant regular running power because that's each leg of power. See, I, I doubled up my six gauge here going to my um, service panel because I wanted to make sure that I got enough current flow without heating up the wires and these wires never get hot. And these wires down here go out to the plug that goes to my generator. So if I do have a problem with um, the sun just disappeared and decided to go warm a different planet, I could fire that generator up and keep electricity going inside my place. All right, so that's about it. Uh, I think uh, this battery I'm going to have to uh, get rid of and uh, change it out because it's gr it holds the charge no problem it's it and the specific gravity in each of the cells is right where it's supposed to be and it's showing like it's a brand new battery but for some reason the um, <clears throat> electrolyte from that back um, unit right there drains down to hold hardly nothing and then this side up here overflows and that's why it's wet on top and that's what you're seeing down here on the floor so I have to come every now and then take off those caps I use my um, hydrometer to suck the liquid out of this first one and put it back in the third one over there until they're all equal put it all back together again and then in a week's time it's done that again I can't figure out why it's doing that because each one of these two volt cells, uh, that's why you have three caps. That's three different cells, two volts each. Each one of those batteries is six volts. So you tie them together right there in the center, uh, positive to negative, and then that become, those two become a 12 volt battery. So that's a 12 volt, that's a 12 volt, and that's a 12 volt. Now if I was going to do 24 volt, I would have to do positive and negative in between those also so I would use six batteries at six volts is 36 volts so I would need um, eight batteries for 48 volts but if I wanted 24 volts I would use four four batteries 12 and 12 is 24 so that's what we got going on out here. I just figured I'd catch you up to date on that. Now, it's cold out here, as you saw from the uh, thermometer in the beginning. So I'm going back inside because uh, I'm just wearing shorts and my slippers, but I did put my hoodie on because it is cold out here. And I'm going to go uh, get this thing uploading and then go see and make sure that the chickens are okay, make sure they got food and water. Well, that's about all, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget the thumbs up down there, and don't forget to subscribe. This is G-Bear, signing off.